Well, hello everybody and welcome to another video tutorial. My name is Peter Draculic and in this video tutorial I want to show you how you can simulate the movement of some uh, fast moving clouds in a very efficient, not very demanding uh, in memory terms uh, way uh, by using a metaball in Blender. So in this scene you can see that we have the effect of fast moving clouds and uh, the rendering for this scene it's also very very quick and uh, the whole technique is rather efficient in terms of, uh, of uh, using the processor and, uh, and the memory efficient. So uh, without further ado let's go ahead and get started. So I'm switching over to the default panel and I want to show you my scene and the scene is consisted of uh, a simple plane for the background and a very simple house object and the important thing here that what makes the clouds is a metaball so I'm going to delete this metaball right away so I'm deleting this metaball and I'm going to be adding a new metaball so shift A uh, add a metaball uh, and select a plane meta uh, metaball. All right. So this is our plane metaball, and position this object uh, fairly high, so that when you look through the camera, you can see it somewhere here. Uh, all right. So now uh, we want to scale up the uh, the metaball, all right, a little bit by 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 pressing S and X so we can scale it up along the X axis in such a way that it covers the whole uh, camera view. Alright, now next thing we want to do is to uh, is to go ahead and add two keyframes for this metaball. So I want to go down here to the to the to the uh, to the time panel and I want to press shift left arrow so I'm I'm getting to the first frame of my animation and I want to uh, go to this button over here the little cube icon and I want to uh, to go to the scale here uh, panel and I want to right click and select insert keyframes so I have added keyframes for the scale of my metaball object now I want to move to the last frame of my animation by pressing shift right arrow and I want to scale up my metaball just to the uh, at, to the at the uh, X and Y plane so I want to press S shift Z right and I want to scale it up fairly uh, just about double the side of my uh, of the original si uh, size of my metaball object so somewhere here perhaps you can experiment with that of course so now being at the last frame of my animation I want to go to this scale uh, panel here and I want to right click and select insert keyframes so now if I scrub uh, through the timeline you can see if I play the animation uh, my metaball object is scaling up right okay Having added those keyframes, next thing we want to do is to let's stop the animation. Is to go over here to the material panel and to add a material to my metaball. I have already prepared my uh, my material, and I want you to uh, to pay attention to my material because it's very important. The material in uh, in this simulation. So I want to. Uh, give to my material a rather yellowish color, light yellow color. I want to uh, to bring the specular, the, the the intensity of the specular, all the way down to zero, right? And I want to also add a slight emit uh, value to my material, something like 0 0.3 perhaps, all right? And very important, I want to add transparency to my material. So I check the transparency uh, button here and bring the alpha value all the way down to zero. All right, uh, the transparency should be, a Z transparency should work very well. 
Now, very important, let's move further down here, it's to go to the shadow panel and uncheck deactivate the receive shadow option. So we don't want for our object to receive shadows, but, do, but, but we do want for our object to uh, receive transparent shadows and also we want for it to cast shadows. So the only thing you want to deactivate is the receive uh, shadow buttons. Okay. So now, having uh, having said that, uh, we also want to uh, to go to the material for the plane and for the house. And for both of them, for the plane and the house materials, we want to act to activate the option receive transparent. That's very important if you want to give the effect of the shadows of the uh, clouds uh, as they are moving over the house and the plane. All right, now we are going back to the uh, to the to the to the clouds object, and we want for this object, for the material of this object, we want the transparency of of this material to be controlled by a texture. So let's click on this little uh, icon over here all right and let's see what kind of texture we can add to our uh, metaball clouds object so that we give we can give the illusion that we can we can get the illusion of uh, of some fast moving clouds so the the texture is built in inside blender so you don't have to search for the texture and it's the clouds uh, texture, which by the way is a uh, is a texture that is uh, generated, all right, by Blender through algorithms. So uh, the 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 settings for this texture here, I want to set the contrast to something like three, the brightness as you can see to something like 1.4, and then I want to select the hard option, so not the soft, but the hard option instead. All right, so we can have some crisp uh, uh, exit, uh, whatever uh, clouds. All right, now you can play around with the algorithms like Blender Original or Voronoi or things like that. Set the size to something 1.05. Would you you can experiment with Nabia and the depth and the depth the setting of three should be okay. Now we want to map this texture on our metable object by using the generated option which is uh, by default activated the generated option, uh, option here and we want to uh, set the projection type to flat all right so having done that uh, so we want now to uncheck the color uh, option for our texture and instead activate the alpha uh, influence setting here so we, uh, we want for this texture to control the transparency or the alpha value of our metaball object. So we set this factor here, this, uh, this slider here, all the way up to 1. All right. And now, having done so, we are ready to have a render. Okay, so let me try now render. So we hit F12 and we have here a render, an instance of our fa fast moving clouds. You can see it's qu it looks quite realistic. Of course, you can always experiment with the settings, the various settings, but the, the technique, the overall technique is as simple as what I have just described to you. So, um, uh, if you render it now, the, the, the 100 frames or any, any, any amount of frames you, you decide and you go to the video editing panel and let's play back the animation, you can see that the whole thing looks fairly realistic and at the same time it's very memory efficient, so it's not so demanding in terms of... Uh, of uh, of, uh, uh, of rendering, of processing, so it won't be difficult for you to get some fast renderings with some fast moving clouds. So that was our tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed it, it and you learned something from this tutorial. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time with a hopefully interesting topic. Until then, have fun.
and goodbye.